So this week is going to be another viewer request, and this one's going to be all about the basics of videography. Now, I'm going to try to answer this the best I can because it's such a huge topic, but I'm going to be going over three of the most important things that I can think of for getting started doing video. <laughs> So videography, like I said, it's a huge, huge subject. Um, so it's gonna be hard to kind of cover everything like in one video, but what I will do is pick out three of the most important things that I can think of to help you actually get started with a project and actually get out there and shoot for you know a successful video project that you'll end up editing. So the first thing that I think is most important is picking your frame rate. Now, if you're unfamiliar with frame rate, um, basically all it is is it's a setting within the camera and all it's saying is how many frames during each second of filming am I going to be recording? So some of the popular ones are 60 frames a second, 30 frames a second, uh, 25 frames a second if you're out, I think, in Europe, and then 24 frames a second, which is sort of like, I guess, the old time like cinema standard. So um, a lot of it kind of comes down to personal preference. Um, especially when you're making a project to go on YouTube or to show to your friends, it's basically all down to personal preference. Now, for me personally, I prefer 24 and it's gonna kinda sound goofy because 30 frames a second and 60 frames a second just look too smooth to me. And uh, I mean, you know, it's not make or break, you know, for your project and it's gonna be something that you're gonna end up figuring out as you go along. So, you know, go out, shoot some stuff in 60 frames a second, shoot some stuff in 30 frames a second, and then go shoot some stuff in 24 frames a second to kind of see which one you think looks better and which one will be more beneficial for you. Now, with that being said, 24 frames per second does have uh, an obvious benefit over like 30 frames a second and especially 60 frames a second and that is slow motion recording. Now, I'm gonna be using this camera as an example right here. Uh, this is a Sony a6300. Now, it has the capability to record up to 120 frames per second. So, basically, uh, if you record for one second, it's gonna be um, basically recording 120 frames within that one second window. Now, how that translates into 24 frames a second is, you know, imagine, taking that 120 frames and stretching it out to five seconds, that means that every second that you view of that footage will be 24 frames a second. So, um, you know, if, if that's a little bit over your head, all you have to do is take the um, frame rate that you are recording your footage, so 120, and divide it by the frame rate that you have in your project. So if you are doing a 24 frames per second timeline, you just divide 120 by 24 and that will come out with five. So that is basically showing you that the motion will be slowed down by five times. So, um, you know, if you have somebody that's walking by, it's going to look like it's five times slower. Now with 30 frames a second, uh, if you were to take 120 and divide it by 30, it's going to divide into it by four times. So, so if you have somebody walking by or doing an action, it will slow it down by four times under 30 frames a second versus it'll slow it down five times on 24 frames a second. So this will get exaggerated the further on you go. So like if you're doing a 60 frames per second timeline, you'll end up basically just slowing it down by half. So it's not gonna be nearly as exaggerated as it would be by slowing it down by five times. So I think that's kind of a complicated area. So if you aren't very familiar with these frame rates, I might be just talking gibberish to you, but it is important, so if you do end up you know, getting some free time, go out and shoot with your camera, see which one looks better for you, try out a little bit of slow motion and see if that slow motion looks good. And that will lead me into my part number two, which is how to structure your film. So structuring your filming is um, a really, really great way to make it easier on you uh, when you're actually filming, because it gives you kind of like a solid structure every spot that you go of what you need to get. And then also it'll make it easier on the viewer to understand what's going on. Um, now the way that I really like to kind of uh, do this personally is kind of some of the basics of film in general. It's have an establishing shot, which is just like a wide shot of the area, 
just to kind of show you this is where I am. And then you can kind of go in from there, you know, maybe zooming in on somebody that you're with or an action that they're doing. And then you can get into like some of the more detailed shots like close ups, stuff like that. Cause imagine if you were to go to the beach and just only be filming the rocks down on the ground. And then without notice, you go to a new location, it's a forest and you're filming close ups on a tree trunk. The viewer isn't really gonna be having any idea of what's going on because all they see is rocks and then they see tree trunks. So those two things don't really mesh together. So a good way to kind of um, make this easier on them is by doing those establishing shots. Now I'm gonna show you kind of an example right here from uh, a video that I did out in the Sierras where I kind of think this is a really, really good example of um, the establishing shot and then going into a new location. So I will lead this in with um, uh, the previous scene. So you see here it's a waterfall and then the water going down and then it's gonna go into a new location where it has a nice wide shot showing, okay, now we're in the mountains. Okay, more mountains. Okay, let's see, what's this, a building? Okay, nice, an establishing shot of the building. So we're at the building. I'm walking towards the building and then you can assume that I am taking photos of the building or of just the area in general. And then that will lead me into my next location. Look, nice wide shot of some grasslands and then walking through the grasslands and then a second shot just from a different angle because I thought it looked cool. And then you have some water, people sitting in the water. So it's kind of an easy way to kind of show the location from spot to spot without kind of getting lost um, in what's going on. So here is another example, and this is in San Francisco. So obviously, again, I'm taking photos of the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, and you see it here, taking some photos, and then I'm gonna transition into the next scene, which is me walking up to a cliff. So you can see how that would be a lot easier for somebody to follow, because imagine if I had been in um, San Francisco, taking pictures of the bridge, and then all of a sudden we're down on the beach, uh, pulling seaweed out of the ocean and then walking on rocks. There would be no correlation between those two and nothing to kind of transition it into that spot. So that's why I like to use the uh, kind of like establishing shots to kind of show that, um, you know, okay, this is the new location, this is the new setting, and then you can go into it from there. So then my third and final tip is you need to shoot a lot. And when I tell you that you need to be shooting a lot of footage, I'm not kidding because that Sierra video, for example, is only two minutes long and I filmed over an hour's worth of footage. So just to put that into perspective, every minute of footage that I was filming, I only used about two seconds of that. So if you're going out to a location to go film for like an entire day, um, you know, you might only get a minute worth of good footage. Now, I am taking into account like a time lapse that I did and um, surprisingly enough, the footage that I took of the deer, is about a 10 minute long clip, but it's still something you need to take into account that, you know, you have to be filming a lot more than you think you do because a lot of the locations that you go to, you might figure out you don't like how it looks or you just doesn't work with whatever you're editing or putting together. So I think that kind of covered the basics that I wanted to go over right there. Obviously, I wanna kind of keep this a little bit shorter um, because this is gonna start turning into an incredibly long video if I try to cover everything. But if I didn't answer your questions, just let me know down below and I can answer any additional questions you might have. And uh, I might go into um, more stuff in this related field, like some of the basics of putting together your first video. Um, just some little quick tips on editing the footage and getting your first video from film to an actual completed project. So um, look out for that in the near future. And I've also got some more content coming up very, very soon. So subscribe if you wanna see more content and also check out some of my older videos as well. So um, I do wanna thank you guys for watching this entire video and I will see you on the next one.